All right, so I wanted to do something new where um, I show the books that we post on our social media. Um, these books are just random uh, grabs. Um, most of the time I have not read them, uh, but I thought it'd be cool to go ahead and look at them uh, and just kind of, you know, I obviously, like I said, I haven't read them, so I can't give reviews, but just kind of give you an overview of the story. Uh, first up is this 1966 Arrow edition of Dennis Wheatley, The Haunting of Toby Jug, a black magic story. Love that artwork they got going on there. Uh, so, horrific scenes of the supernatural, vivid climax in the terror of a black mass. The Haunting of Toby Jug is a classic of occult fiction. So it doesn't really say much about it. Cool skull there. Uh, this is the UK edition. I think this was originally published in 1948. Uh, for Valentine's Day, I posted this uh, horror collection, 14 Vicious Valentines. Uh, these are all horror type stories having to do with love. It has an introduction by Isaac Asimov, which is really strange. Uh, let's say Avon. Let's see what year it was. This was compiled in... Compiled in 1988. So, it has... Let's see here. Roses are red, violets are blue, but murder comes in every hue. Mm. Don't expect a dozen roses this Valentine's Day. Just 14 tales of crime and horror that will make February 14th memorable for lovers of chills and thrills. Uh, the authors here listed. Jeanette M. Hopper, Nedra Tear, <laughs> Jane Williamson. Not one of my favorites. I don't know about you. Uh, Talmadge Powell, Edward D. Hotch, Edward Wellen, John McClay, William F. Nolan, Rick Hatula, Daniel Ransom, Steve Raznick Tim, Mary Ann Malsberg, Bill Kreider. I've only heard of two of these authors, so. No, I should have read it, huh? I forgot I had it until after uh, Valentine's Day passed. Got this Robert Silverberg, The Silent Invaders. Very cool uh, romantic type sci-fi cover here. A 1963 uh, Ace. We just did a review. Oh, no, I didn't do the review. <laughs> I recorded it but never posted because I didn't like it. But I just read um, Robert Silverberg, uh, The Book of Skulls. Uh, so, yeah, there won't be a review video because I just can't put it into words, but it was really good. Uh, let's see. The Silent Invaders is a novel of action and adventure. It is the story of an unsuspecting Earth used as a battleground by two advanced alien races and of how the Earthmen discover the vicious struggle in their midst and are drawn into a war they cannot hope to win. It's Robert Silverberg, so I'm sure that uh, that shouldn't be taken at face value. And there will probably be some, like, philosophical type elements in it. Um, everything that I've read is much deeper than the basic sci-fi premise. Next is this Edgar Rice Burroughs' The Monster Men with the Frank Frazetta cover. Uh, this is originally published in 1929. This is an ace science fiction, but I don't know what year it came out. It didn't have it in the book, so. Uh, they called him number 13, the latest and best of Dr. Von Horn's attempts to make life from lifeless chemicals. He found himself an almost human on Von Horn's hideaway jungle island off the coast of Borneo. He saw the monsters that had preceded him and grew used to those dreadful travesties of humanity. 
Not until number 13 met the American girl who was Von Horn's unwilling prisoner did he realize how different he was from the others. Because monster or not, he turned against his master and threw in his lot with the girl and his friends in their desperate effort to escape the island of terror. The story of the Monster Men is Edgar Rice Burroughs' novel of savages, primitive monsters, and jungles in the best Tarzan style. Next is this 1986 Cobra, The Heroin Connection uh, by Joseph R. Rosenberg, author of The Death Merchant. This is a critic's choice. Interesting. Cobra is uh, an acronym, but I couldn't find what it was for. I think my aunt actually posted it in the Facebook group. Oh, by the way, there's a Facebook group. Uh, if you want to join, anyone can post there. It's not just like you're following me. Anyone can post their books or say whatever. Uh, there's only like 29 people, but uh, please feel free to join because uh, that would be awesome to have more more posts from different people. Uh, let's see. Skull has a job to do. He's a covert operations man equipped with an arsenal of weaponry more deadly than ever before conceived. He'll use anything or anybody to get this job done. Debbie Miles is no soft touch either. She'll use anything she has to get whoever and whatever she's after. Together they take on the meanest, cruelest, bloodiest bunch of cutthroats that ever existed. So this is, you know, some really, um, oh, like right wing type, uh, tough on crime, <laughs> don't follow the rules, kill everyone type book. Uh, the guy is, shoots people and is tough and I'm guessing that she just bangs whoever she needs to to get the job done. Jiggles her way through. Uh, ridiculous stuff, and I love this ridiculous stuff. I, You know, as far as in fiction goes, in the real world, not so much. Next is this uh, 1983, I believe, um, Night Child by Scott Baker. It's a timescape uh, pocket fiction. Amazing cover. Trippy. Super trippy cover. I love those eyeballs. Like, is this the guy? You think that's just two humans sitting there holding eyes, but it's actually a person. Would you, like, zoom out and look at the whole thing? You got this tree, tree head guy. Lifts lots of weights. Uh, Vulcan reject down here. Planet of an eyeball. Depths of an alien planet and ancient evil arises. Rises. Night Child. On a strange planet, an orphan boy must unleash the secret powers of the undead. In a world where everyone worships the goddess of death, an orphan boy is guilty of the ultimate blasphemy. He senses he is alive, unlike the masked ones who believe they are dead. Damned, damned sinners in the internal dungeons of hell. Now the orphan must discover the bizarre powers that link him to the mysterious creatures of the long-lost planet Nosferatu. The risk is great. If he fails, his galaxy may perish. If he succeeds, the slumbering forces of the undead will engulf the universe. Sounds super metal. Uh, I love all the evil going on in this. I mean, the planet's called Nosferatu. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is like a horror sci-fi. Um, border horror, as I like to say. Man, this shit, I should... Uh, I should make this my next sci-fi read. That would be, that would be good. Uh, next, we got this 1992 The Last Rangers. I just did a review of this. Uh, it's one going to be probably one of my last full-length reviews, uh, and I'll put the link up here. Uh, it's basically a uh, sci-fi post-apocalypse western crossover uh, but go ahead and click on that link and you can hear the review up next is this 1984 edition of the curse of the bronze lamp by carter dixon uh john dixon car it's a carol and graf carol and graf publisher i love how gothic uh this cover looks 
like classic horror haunted house gothic style. Uh, Carter Dixon or Carter Dixon John Dixon Carr is a uh, a mystery writer, like classic mystery. I believe this is written in the forties, originally published in the forties. Yeah, copyright nineteen forty five. There is said to be a curse on anyone who takes the bronze lamp out of Egypt. Lady Helen Loring, of course, thinks such tales are sheer poppycock, and to prove her point, takes the lamp back to England and places it on the mantelpiece at Servan Hall. Then she disappears, just as the seer said she would. Clearly, this is the case for Sir Henry Murrayvale, and even he finds it the toughest nut he's ever tried to crack. So, uh, classic mystery with a little bit of uh, Egypt curse going on. Very cool. Uh, last up is this 1985 medical horror, Heads, David Osborne. It's a bantam. Uh, this is featured in the Paperbacks from Hell uh, book, the nonfiction book about 80s horror, classic paperback horror. Surgery is sanctioned by Washington, performed in secret, and afterwards, the patients are never seen or heard from again, until Susan McCullough, a young neurophysiologist on the staff of the eminent Borg Harrison Medical Laboratory, opens a door that should have been locked. Behind that door is proof of the most shocking medical experiment of all time. Now Susan has discovered the truth, and she knows that her fate is sealed, for if she is caught, they will strap her on a table, wheel her into surgery, then they will shut her away in that horrible room, the terrifying chamber that no one ever escapes. And apparently you lose your head. I'm not really a fan of medical horror, medical stuff in general. That just doesn't appeal to me. But I see, you know, when I found this, it was a couple bucks and I couldn't pass it up. Who knows, maybe I'll read it someday. So, yeah, that's all. Um... We're just going to do these randomly as they post the the books and, you know, follow us on any of your preferred social media. I have Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Twitter sucks. Uh, the Instagram is definitely my favorite. Uh, that's where I started. Uh, so, yeah, I'll put links down there. Actually, they're probably already down there on every video. But, um, all right, thanks for watching.